Good morning, everyone. Happy Wednesday, January 31st, the last trading day in January. And it should be an interesting one with uh, the Fed announcement today regarding interest rates this afternoon. So and then there was earnings after the bell yesterday, Microsoft and Goog, Google. Um Actually had good results, but their stock had, had went down after earnings. Goog currently down a little over 5%. Microsoft has come back up a little bit. It's uh, just down about a little under half a percent. Um, but the NASDAQ in general down about 200 points, so... NASDAQ futures, uh, Dow futures green up 60, S&P down 27. Uh, S&P has an expect, SPX has an expected move of about 29 points today, which is um, higher than it's been recently. So <clears throat> it'll be interesting to see uh, with the, the zero DTE iron condors that I do, um, will there be some chop at, the, you know, in the morning while, Everyone just waits for the Fed Fed announcement. Um, I'm hoping to get on, you know, at least one, maybe two iron condors this morning and hopefully be scaled out and just let the market do whatever it wants to do. Um, you know, when the Fed announces that, I mean, it's going to go one way or the other. Um, and so another reason I want to have at least one or maybe two on is because I've got I'll have those longs on. And uh, if the market uh, crashes or or goes up 1%, I've got those longs that will be in, uh, potentially valuable, but hopefully be scaled out of the um, shorts, you know, by the time that announcement happens at 1 p.m. Central. So for now, we're doing the mighty 90s and runners, volume runners, continuation runners for this first hour. If you are new, welcome. Uh, make sure you, if you are new to the Mighty 90 Volume Runner and Continuation Runner, make sure you go to the Day Trading Courses. Find those. There's the bell. Find those courses and then watch the courses and do at least 100 paper trades of these strategies. Do not trade real money out of the gates. <clears throat> Going to be interested to keep an eye on futures today. Or I guess just the indices. NASDAQ down 185, S&P down 22, and the Dow down 55. Morning fast. Morning Al, Al Piero. Wait, I'm saying that right. MRP and Benji. Russell falling. NAS, uh, Dow coming down. Microsoft pushing up into the green territory, so... I wondered about that because it it had had um, you know its its earnings were actually pretty good even though it, it came down it's worked its way all the way back up and then now it's green. Morning theta. Apple coming down. So, again, if you're new with these, uh, you know, we're just buying puts and calls here, directional. 
Um, make sure you position size correctly because, um, you know, a little more risky to just buy a put or buy calls. So. I always have, I always tell people, and I haven't said that, I haven't said this in a while, but I always tell people when you trade the mighty 90 and volume runner, continuation runner, you got to have an idea of what going in small looks like for you. What does going in medium size look for you? What does going in big look for you? For example, for me, going in small would be like 2,500 buying power and below. Going in medium size, which is what I normally do, is going in about, at about 2,500 to 3,500 of buying power. And then going in big for me would be 3,500 or higher of buying power. So you have to determine that based on your account size. Um, today, I might go a little smaller just because um, combination of earnings plus a Fed announcement coming up. Never know what could happen. So I might lean closer to the 2,000 of buying power, 2,000 to 2,500 right in there rather than, you know, 3,000, 3,500. Getting a lot of pushing up right now um, by uh, some of these stocks. Meta, Tesla, Netflix, Microsoft, NVIDIA. Today, we trade the two days to expiration option chain. So two DTE. We do not do anything... With this first bar, we kind of we gotta wait till the second bar to see if when we when the second bar starts here in about five seconds, we'll look for a volume runner, which is um, the second bar being bigger than the first and in the same direction. Morning, Sanray. Morning, Gonzalo. Morning, rookie trader. I'm going to keep my eye on ES here, see if we get a couple pushes and then some consolidation as we head into uh, the waiting of the Fed announcement. Morning, Deox. <clears throat> Walmart announces three for one stock split. Just saw that on across the business channel here. That's interesting considering it's only $166. NASDAQ getting some back here. It's down 157 now. S&P coming up a little bit here as well. AMD had earnings yesterday, and it was down quite a bit after earnings was announced. Uh, it's kind of coming. It's kind of been coming up here. It's, uh, it's down to about four percent now. <clears throat> so we're looking for a volume bar bigger than the first, and in the same direction. Yesterday, we had a really nice square downside volume runner.
Roku. Got some potential here for a Roku downside volume runner. Zoom. So that could flip green pretty easily. Still a lot of time left. But Roku's definitely going to get there. So if Roku gets bigger than the, the first here, we're gonna we want to look for a little bounce that could happen during this five minute bar or it could happen during the next one. You know, if we're getting close to the end of this bar, which has got about a minute and a half left, and it's it's kind of where it is now, and it might be a good time to get in, but We'll wait till it gets closer to this closing because we don't want it to flip green in the last 15 seconds. Had that happen before. Looks like Zoom might get there as well. Check think or swim on that one. Let's get close. Got about 30 seconds left. Watching Roku and Thinkorswim as well. It's still not there yet. It's like it just froze. It just, it just, just didn't quite get there and think or swim. I mean, it's close, but I'm going to pass on it. So we will wait. VIX only up a little over half a percent. It's coming up, though. Tesla looks like it wants to go higher. Nice push up. Kind of pausing here. Don't usually do continuation runners this early. Are we looking for mighty 90s right now, from now on? Yeah, thought Tesla would push up there. Just looked like it wanted to. NASDAQ down to 212 now. So NASDAQ has fallen and has pushed through low, uh, pre market lows. VIX firing up. Going to be interesting this afternoon, that's for sure. Yeah, the second bar just needed MRP just needed to be a little bit higher. When it's really close like it is, so, so in my Orion platform here that you guys are looking at, when it's close like this, I'll take a look at Thinkorswim and see what it says. And yeah, it was just it just wasn't quite big enough.
I mean, it could still go down. You just never know. But I like it to be just a little bit higher. So now we're looking for a mighty 90, which is this current bar being bigger than the previous and in the same direction. Yeah, see, yeah, good, good no call in Roku, man. Look at that. I've been, been a loser. Just a lot of years of watching price movement. Yeah, new Tesla is going to push up. So S and P starting out kind of choppy. I, I wondered about that. A lot of time on these days, uh, leading up to a Fed announcement, you'll just get chop until the announcement. But we're definitely getting some two-way action here. Tesla pushed through highs of day, but some of these other tech stocks coming down. Boeing pushing highs of day, Baba pushing highs of day, and Baidu. When you see stair stepping down in volume, like Boeing here, it's just not you're just not getting any signals. And so I, you know, you don't want to force anything. When you're just buying puts and calls, two things you don't want to guess. Well, if you find yourself saying, well, I think it's going this way, I think it'll go this way, you, you should probably reevaluate that. And, um, and then the uh, second one would be just watching your position sizing. No, nothing in Apple. What? what uh, so I, I love it when I love it when um, you guys post. Um, you know, there might be a potential trade that maybe I've missed. Yeah, but always, always post what strategy you're referring to. Uh, no, because you don't want it to be a tick higher. Like you want it there to be clear separation. That's always a lot of confusion for people new to the Mighty 90. They see something like this and they're like, oh, well, it's bigger than the previous one. Well, no, it's not really. Like you want you want distinct volume pop separation. Yeah, stair stepping down like this does not lead to, to very many good signals. A lot of stair stepping down here. Microsoft pushed up out of the gates. Now it's come all the way back down. SP pushed down. So, again, another reason why I, I wait to do my iron condors is because typically you might see uh, two different pushes between. You know, in the first 30 to 45 minutes of the market open. Kind of seeing a push down right now. VIX climbing. Now up uh, two and a third percent. Look at Roku. Good no call on that one. These days where you have, you know, days after earnings and Fed announcement coming up, you just got to be a little more careful.
So I've got an order at Square. Filled at 142 in Square. On a mighty 90 short. So I would get out of half at... Get out of half my contracts. At... Well, let's go 160. BAC, I, haven't, I don't have BAC on my list. I can definitely take a look at it. Yeah, so BAC looks like an upside volume runner. Not a mighty 90, San Ray. The third bar is bigger than the first. And it's already come down to to where you would exit anyway. So it would be a failed volume runner right now. So glad we're not in that one. So, but you can see with Square, it's a definite... You can see how the volume pops. So compare that one to the one that somebody said earlier. Major difference. So even like this Apple doesn't have that volume pop separation. I was close to getting out of half my uh, square, but now it's come back up. Okay, so based on what I just said about Square, what, what are we thinking here with Roblox? Anybody? What would we want to do here with Roblox? So Rookie Trader says Mighty 90. What's everybody else say? Exactly fast could be could be a volume runner rookie trader because there's there were still a minute and a half left and look how big that bar is a bar gets bigger than this first one it's an upside volume runner so I'm gonna hold off on that. Winbase had a little mighty 90. So square going to give us one red bar. We're looking for two consecutive reds. Check Roblox in thinkorswim. Yeah, that bar is going to get, Roblox is going to get as big as the first. So that would be an upside volume runner. So that's some, that's, that's why you don't get in. If you would have got short there and it turns into an upside volume runner and then rips up, it's a big losing trade for you. So that's why you got to be careful and watch the time of entry. I'm just going to pass on it altogether. The reason I'm passing on it is it's a weak market. And uh, this would be getting long. I mean, it could rip to the upside, but I'm just not going to take the chance being a, being a, as a weak market. So we got out of we got one red bar out of, out of uh, square. So we're looking for one more. Uh, yeah, maybe a little bit, but not going to. Look look at the volume here compared to square. Look at the separation. In volume. 
There's, I like to see a little clearer separation. Square coming down. It should be maybe hitting hitting my hitting half here. Hopefully. <clears throat> Try to get out of half my square here. I should be getting out of it. Huh. And went, there we go. Filled at uh, 163 in square. <clears throat> Close half. So I would close the rest of my square after this bar because it's uh, giving us two consecutives. But in the meantime, I would get out of another square at a buck seventy five. So put that in. See, like Microsoft, a lot of stair-stepping down in volume. That just doesn't really do anything for us. Futures kind of pausing down there. Halfway through this bar. Baidu, man, ripping up. Baidu, make it a some mighty 90 short. Yeah, Roku was just a little mighty 90, but... Beautiful, mighty 90 and square. <laughs> Filled it a buck 78. To close another square. So I'll be closing the rest of my mighty 90 here now that it's given me a second red bar. Um now this this red this red current red bar might get it if it gets as big as the first, I might leave a couple contracts on just to see if it's gonna continue to run. But you know, rules for a mighty 90 are to close after two consecutives. Boeing looks like it wants to go higher. Push up, a little consolidation, and then you know, that's what we would call a continuation to the upside. Keep my eye on that one. Ooh, we got some wide strikes for the S&P. All right, so so square has given me two consecutive red bars, and it's not that's not a upside or downside volume runner. So I'm gonna go ahead and close my square. Um, tell you what, I'm gonna leave two contracts on. In case this thing flushes. 
I do this sometimes. It is coming down. Okay. So I'm just going to maybe scale out of here. Let's see. I'll go, I'll, close. I'll go ahead and close all but two. Ah, bounced up, darn it. I've got an order to buck eighty one to get out of all but two of my contracts, but it's looking like maybe I should just get rid of all of them. Because Yeah, I'm trying to get out of here. Now it's popping up on me. Filled at a buck seventy six to close square. Closed all of it. So nice mighty ninety there. Goog. Yeah, it did have a little mighty ninety short, but we I missed it. trying to close my square i mean also goog had earnings so i typically don't get in to a uh a stock that has earnings um you know the day before What else we got? Baidu, yeah, had that little mighty 90. But, you know, when you see in this type of price movement, you know, it might be a stock on a mission. You just kind of stay away from it. So here you can see why we, we get out of square after two. Red ball, consecutive red bars. It's trying to push back up. So not a lot of good signals here today. Yeah, Boeing may break out higher of this little consolidation. So this would be a continuation runner for you people that are new. So... If Boeing comes back down and kind of sits right here, kind of like this bar did, you know, you could get long thinking that, you know, it's had this push. It's consolidating. It's down here at the bottom of this consolidation. So you get in hoping that it busts out. Now, if it doesn't and goes against you and it breaks below the consolidation, you get out of it and it just turns into a small loser. So it's a low risk. Okay. You don't want to get into it up here thinking it's going to go up because if it comes back down, well, you're not, yeah, now you're already down in the trade and then it breaks through the consolidation. Now you're down in it even more. So you would want to get in down here somewhere towards the bottom of this consolidation and then bail on it. You know, it's, It could be a quick trade. You may get in down here and then within five minutes it pushes through and you're, you know, it could be less than a five-minute trade. But that's the value of continuation runners. They can be low risk. So futures starting to starting to maybe chop a little bit. I'm interested to see if the S and P breaks through here. If it starts, to, or if it pushes all the way back up. I give it a few more minutes here. I might enter an iron condor here shortly. You can see the NASDAQ starting to kind of consolidate a little bit.
what else we got? Um, yeah, Tesla could be considered a, uh, a continuation runner to the upside because it's had this push up. It's kind of consolidating here. So same thing. You know, if, if it comes down to right in the bottom part of this consolidation, you could get long. And then if it pushes down through it, you would just bail on it. Yep, for sure. Dow coming down through lows of day. And the Dow that was once green is now red. Let's see, do you wait for a close below the consolidation range for a stop out on those, or do you get rid of it as soon as it? So I, I don't use stops, like I don't use stop outs you know, when I'm doing this. Um, but I would just close the trade. Like if I, I would op I'd open the trade down here at the bottom of this consolidation, you know, get filled at whatever, and then you know it could continue to chop around. If it doesn't push up and then it pushes below, you just you just go in and close the trade. Just get out of it with with the best fill you can get. See, Roblox, you know, that bar getting almost as big as the first. Think if we would have treated that like a mighty 90, another losing trade. If we would have got in, you know, you got to you gotta, you gotta be mindful that sometimes if those bars get bigger than the previous, it has potential to, to push, continue to push and get to, to be as big as the first. So Boeing right now would be a good time to enter a continuation runner. To the upside. So let's just do one of those. So Boeing, how much time is left on this bar? Okay, not much time. So Boeing, I would trade the 205 calls. Build at 395. So on this next one here, if it pushes through here, then I'm bailing on it. So 10% would be 435. I would close half at 435. Just just limit orders, Ken. Nothing, nothing too fancy about what we're doing here. We're just buying puts and calls. You know, sometimes I've also seen it like dip its toe down. <laughs> it's like dipping its toe below the consolidation and then pops right back up. See how it's, it's just, it's right there, you know, so I'm just going to keep a close eye on it. You can kind of see, again, this is years of watching price action. I don't, I don't want to get out if it's just going to dip below it and pop right back up. So I want to make sure it looks like it's going to push through this consolidation to the downside before I close. You know, getting a good, getting, that's why getting a good fill down here is so critical. See, if you would, if you would have got long up here, thinking it was going to go up, and then it comes down, well, now you're already down. You know, maybe a couple hundred bucks. You know, so.
S and P futures kind of down right there where they've they've held. I don't know if it's going to push through there or not. <clears throat> You know, if this this becomes a losing trade, like it, that's not going to bother me one bit because at least you you all have kind of seen what a losing continuation runner would be. So either way, you're going to kind of see it here. Looks like it's trying to push through there. So we've got still a couple minutes left. So I'm going to go ahead and close Boeing. Build at 375. Okay, so this is this is good education for you guys. 395 got filled out for 375. Small loser, but this is what a this is what a losing continuation runner looks like right here. So, all right, guys, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, I'm not gonna take any more of these trades. So I'm going to jump off and then start looking at uh, entering an iron condor. So I would post that in the live chat. So uh, I will be live tomorrow morning, same time, same place, same strategies. So see you then. Peace.